34 adopting credit card policy whereas the town of Boston recognizes the potential consequences of failing to adopt and enforce the credit card policy and to provide its employees and other users with clear guidance on acceptable use in credit card procedures um, make a motion that we accept the resolution to 2019-34 adopting the credit card policy dated June 5th 2019 and directs all employees to comply Councilor Munger. Just to let everybody know if anybody wants to read the terrible and riveting portion of this that explains the credit card policy, we do have it up here and it's available for reading. Uh, with that uh, clarification, yes. Councilman Cardichini? Yes. Supervisor Keating? Yes. Councilwoman Lukacic? Yes. Council it was riveting. <laughs> and Councilwoman Martin? Yes. Motion carried. The next one's much more exciting. <laughs> Item number six under new business resolution 2019-35, which is adopting the town information security policy. Uh, if anyone would like to read this one, uh, this policy, this is a uh, quite a lengthy policy. Uh, it actually is a 20-page document. Uh, the state controller's office uh, is essentially uh, these are all recommended policies. So you can actually, the community will see more of these coming along as what as the town of Boston is coming into the 21st century with some of this documentation. But uh, the resolution is uh, for adopting the information security, security policy and the town of Boston recognizes <coughs> that the potential consequences for failing to adopt and enforce an information security policy and whereas the town further desires to provide its employees and other users with clear guidance on acceptable use and IT procedures and now therefore resolve that the town board of the town of Boston hereby adopts the information security policy dated June 5, 2019 and directs all employees to comply. I make a motion to approve resolution 2019-35. I'll second that. Councilman Munger? Yes. Councilman Karnikini? Yes. Supervisor Keating? Yes. Councilwoman Lukacic? Yes. Councilwoman Martin? Yes. Motion carried. Item number seven under new business, we have resolution 2019-36, which is authorizing procurement of the 4th of July fireworks display. Councilwoman Martin? Thank you, Supervisor. Resolution number 2019-36 is authorizing the procurement of Independence Day celebration fireworks from Sky, uh, Skylighters of New York LLC in the amount of $9,999. They have served the town well in previous years, and I make a motion to accept their proposal. Second. Councilman Munger? Yes. Councilman Cardichini? Yes. Supervisor Keating? Yes. Councilwoman Lukacic? Yes. Councilwoman Martin? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, item, item number eight, uh, I think is resolution 2019-37. Accepting a solid waste bid, Councilman Munger. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Yes, uh, this resolution number 2019 37 is accepting the bid for solid waste collection and disposal contract. Uh, I'm going to read this in full so that everybody knows what's going on. Uh, normally, we would uh, kind of uh, bring it down to less than a full page, but I want to read exactly everything that is written here. Whereas the town of Boston duly advertised for bids in solid waste collection and disposal in the town for the period of July 1st, 2019 through June 30th, 2022, with the option for up to two renewal terms and an annual price adjustment based on consumer price index for the garbage and trash collection, subcategory capped at 2.5% per year. <clears throat> and whereas an opening bid, uh, a bid opening was held on May 28, 2019, and whereas one bid was received from Waste Management of New York, LLC, uh, further out uh, herein to be referred to as Waste Management, and whereas Waste Management's base bid for collection and disposal of solid waste from the 2915 residents, residential units in the town was $237.07 per unit per year, with a total base bid of $691,059.05. And whereas waste management offers the option of use of blended value in the calculation of the cost of recycling services, and accepting this bid initially would save the town $9.60 per residential unit, with a set rate to fluctuate between, based on recycling commodity prices, uh, containment and other forces described by waste management in its May 28, 2019 proposal. Now therefore be it resolved that the town board of the town of Boston hereby accepts the base bid 
of $237.07 per residential unit by Waste Management of New York LLC for solid waste collection and disposal and authorizes the town supervisor to execute an agreement with Waste Management of New York LLC to perform those services. And it is further resolved that the town board hereby further authorizes the town supervisor to include in the agreement with Waste Management the use of blended value for the calculation of recycling charges as outlined in Waste Management's May 28, 2019 proposal. Uh, I would like to make them, well, let me explain a little bit what that means for our town <coughs> residents. Um, by accepting the base bid, nothing will change, essentially. You will have exactly what you have been used to for collection and disposal. Give me two seconds, Kevin. So uh, we currently are not choosing to go with bins. Uh, we are currently choosing to maintain exactly as it has been. Yes, Kevin. Okay. Jason, you had put out a thing on Facebook in regards to option A, B, or C. Yes. Is this option A? B so or C. Those, op those options that you saw, there's two alternates proposed by waste management uh, that were above and beyond the initial bid specs. Uh, option, option A was the, the base bid with blended value. So if you look at that price point, that's exactly what this resolution essentially is, is covering. Then when you look at the totes, uh, the social media... Is that feedback or is that the fan? Fan. Okay, so make sure I wasn't doing something that's causing feedback, sorry. Um, so when you look at the, the, bid, uh, the bid component, when you, you start to bring in the totes, which is obviously the, you know, one of the big discussions that's been going on in the community for years. Um, totes, the option that waste management brought to the table is that those totes um, obviously come at a cost. So there's two alternates that would uh, include totes. Uh, totes was not something that would have happened this year, but would have actually happened in the spring of 2020. So those, those, uh, that, tote, uh, that tote rollout, if the town board decides to go this route down, you know, in the future down the road, um, that would give the town of Austin the ability to work with and partner with waste management for uh, meetings uh, to educate consumers about proper recycling <laughs> and other things. Really, there's a lot of educational opportunities. Truthfully, that we kind of should have seized the moment before. We're going to try to bring those in. If we move towards the tow component, uh, explaining that in a little more detail to probably your question where you were going with this, is that the two alternates included the totes, and while the uh, alternate, which was the option C that was posted out to uh, social media, that that price point, while it was a dollar eighty oh, oh, yeah, dollar eighty seven, I believe it was, uh, difference than the, the base that we're talking about here tonight, those totes would have been waste management property with the town, unlike other municipalities that have uh, procured and acquired the totes by themselves, and then have to t uh, traditionally purchase another, let's say 100, 150, 200 additional totes, store them at their highway barn for replacement and other purposes, Waste management would handle. Wait, sorry. Waste management would handle all, all of that. So that was what was built into that bid. And obviously, there's the other component of uh, bulk pickup, uh, but the the totes do come at a cost. And whether we opt in for totes now or we do it down the road, there's a there's a price component to that. And if we went down the road right now, based off of uh, resin pricing, etc., you know, we could eat the the cost to the taxpayer would approximately be. And again, it's approximate, uh, depending on how many totes based off of volume, but you're looking at about $360,000, $380,000 for totes. Uh, there is a DEC grant that can subsidize some of those costs. Uh, who knows what will, if that will continue to be funded. Uh, I set up the Nest Solid Waste Management Board. I've been on that board now for a little over four years. Um, you know, there's a lot of components in, in the solid waste it, it, as, as a whole, you know, generally speaking, outside of our contract. It's, it's in a, a lot of flux, it's a state of flux right now. I mean, uh, the recycling uh, environment is not what it used to be just last year, yet alone three to four years ago when we used to be able to do contract extensions to keep the costs low for the taxpayer. That was fantastic for all of us, but uh, like everything else, we all know prices go up. And what had happened, uh, the, if anybody happens to recall, last year we did a contract extension, and that was a one-year contract extension only to give the municipality the time to work out on an agreement uh, that would uh, allow us to provide that service and also at a, a decent cost uh, and price point to, to the taxpayer. Uh, so when you, when you take into account the, the price point going out last year, that, for that price increase and the actual gain increase, which was clearly you know shown out on uh, social media today, uh, you know there obviously is a, a cost increase. It's just a matter of how we decide to break that out. Uh, automation 
aka wheel totes. Uh, that that is a cost savings. Uh, it could could be a potential cost savings to the community. Again, that's something we're exploring. We're looking into right now. There's no set commitment. I know that was the big uh, firestorm that was out on social media today. We, uh, the post that I put out there had a little over 102 comments the last time I checked. Uh, but it's great feedback. It says you know it certainly you know this, this board is. A, all of us sitting up here have always listened to the, to the municipality. It's one thing we've always prided ourselves in. It's one thing we've always committed to all of you. So that feedback, yes, we are reading this. We might not respond to every single post on Facebook. Uh, I'll, I'll certainly admit to that. Uh, but we take that feedback. That's that, that's our barometer, you know, to, to get an idea of what the public wants. And of course, as Mr. Mills had stated, you know, here people can always come into the town board meeting. So that's essentially the solid waste component right now. Uh, there's a, a the blended value component, I'll, I'll take a moment and explain that. Sorry, I'm kind of a little long-winded, but just a big There's a lot of information here. Uh, the blended value essentially ties the municipality and waste management, or any hauler for that matter. Uh, it puts some skin in the game on both ends of the spectrum, where we're essentially playing the commodity market. Uh, pla plastics, paper, uh, some of the other components, they're, it's, it's not a lucrative market right now at this state. Uh, if anybody's paid attention to global news and what it was triggered, trade and everything else going on. There are, there are other countries, I'll be uh, politically correct and keep countries' names out, but other countries are literally shipping containers back to us. If they smell containment, uh, if they open them up, and let's say if it's a, a, a plastics container and they happen to pull out three or four DVDs or CDs, so just that foil layer, the CD or the DVD, is considered contamination. And they're saying, not us, because now we have to mean, you know, we have to dispose of it as basically waste <coughs> product, et cetera. Uh, so they're not passing that on, believe it or not. They just ship it, you know, basically return to sender. It comes back to the state. Um, so again, we're, we're in a bit of a state of flux. Um, we'll get through this. Um, the, the, the board members and I, we had a great discussion downstairs. It was, it was a very open discussion. Those who attended the uh, work session downstairs certainly heard it. Um, I, I think uh, you know, we're, we're, we're definitely headed in the right direction. It's just a matter of uh, kind of keeping our eyes to the horizon and trying to play, truly play the market. But that blended value is essentially playing the commodity market, which right now is at a low. So think of it, if it was stock, think of it that we're buying the stock low, and hopefully it goes up. If that's the case, there might be actually a cost savings to the taxpayer, which is a good thing. I don't see the floor falling out of the, 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 the current uh, the, um, the commodity market when it comes to plastics and glass and, and paper. But again, nobody has a crystal ball, and not a single person in this room can predict that kind of an outcome. Uh, so again, these are some of these practices that are becoming the reality, and uh, this is where you know, if any of us are reading in the newspapers or hearing on the local media that uh, you know municipalities are seeing double-digit increases. It's not uncommon, unfortunately. I, I wish I could say otherwise, but it's, it's the cost of doing business, especially when we look at uh, what they call MRF plants, but essentially it's the processing plants. Uh, they're, they're closing up. They're not taking any more waste. They're not taking any more recycling. Uh, there's literally parking lots or warehouses. If, if, if one of the other board members had a picture of a, a warehouse just full of product just sitting there because there's not a market for it. So it's a uh, it's a struggle, and uh, you know it, it it has a certainly has a ripple effect on society. So that's uh, again we're doing our best that we can. We're always here. Uh, in, any one of us, you can reach out to any one of us on the board, Councilman Munger and I, and the attorney for the town. We've been working on this. So you know, hopefully we can continue to keep rates, rates low, keep the service, uh, you know, obviously that service level where all of you expect it to be. And again, if you ever have any problems, questions, et cetera, reach out to us. That's what we're here for. So. Long-winded answer, and I'm sorry, but there's there's a lot that went on out there today. Like I said, with over 100 comments, I felt it was due diligence to explain some of that. Yeah. And, and the other thing that I wanted to mention before I proposed the resolution was to read that first, or at least a portion of that first paragraph also again, um, so that uh, everyone is aware that this is a contract for a uh, time period from July 1st to uh, 19 to June 30th of 22, with the option for up to two renewal terms, meaning that we can renew it for up to six more years total, uh, and capped at an increase of 2.5% per year. So. I think those are just important things for everybody in the in the town to realize. Uh, we really are trying to keep costs for taxpayers as low as possible. With that, uh, I would like to make a motion to approve resolution number 2019-37. I'll second. Councilman Munger? Yes. Councilman Caracchini? Yes. Supervisor Keating? Yes. Councilwoman Lukacek? Yes, I'm listening to the people who spoke up about this, but it's against my personal view because I like the jokes. 
Yes. And Councilwoman Martin. Yes, and I agree with Councilwoman Jennifer. Motion carried. Moving on to item number nine, application for use facility for Barbara, and I hope I'm pronouncing the last name correctly, Saika, Council, Councilman Drake. You want to take this one too? No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Supervisor Keating. We have an application of use of facility by Barbara Sika. Um, her event is going to be Sunday, uh, June 23rd from 9 a.m. until 9 p.m. It is for a party. They are looking at the Lions Shelter. They are not serving alcohol. It is a private party. Um, it is not a public event. Um, Clerk Sandy, is that date available? It is available. I make a motion that we approve this application of use of facility. I'll second that. Councilman Munger? Yes. Councilman Caracchini? Yes. Supervisor Keating? Yes. Councilwoman Lukachik? Yes. Councilwoman Martin? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, item number 10 and 11. We actually have two use facilities for Boston Lions Club. Uh, Councilwoman Martin. Thank you, Supervisor. We received an application for use of facility from the Boston Lions Club for an event which was explained to me was actually a car show being given by a different group, and they are actually um, having a fundraiser on the grounds where they added in concession stand. Um, through discussion with the board, I make a motion to deny this use of facility. Second. Councilman Munker? Yes. Councilman Karakini? Yes. Supervisor Keating? Yes. Councilwoman Lukachik? Yes. Councilwoman Martin? Yes. Motion carried. The second application for use of facility for the Boston Lions Club is for uh, date requested on the 16th of June for a barbecue using their own shelter um, and they are not serving alcohol and it is not a private pro private party or a public special event. Um, their times on the facility, use facility is 12 noon to 4 p.m. They are going to set up at 11 a.m. and take down at 4. Um, I make a motion to approve this application for use of I'll second that. Councilman Munger? Yes. Councilman Caracchini? Yes. Supervisor Keating? Yes. Councilwoman Lukachik? Yes. Councilwoman Martin? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, item number 12, application for use facility, uh, town meeting facility, I'm sorry, uh, for the Boston Democratic, Democratic Social Club. Councilman Munger. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Yes, I have a uh, application for use of town meeting facility uh, for the Democratic Social Club. Dates requested are Tuesday, June 18th, Tuesday, August 20th, Tuesday, September 17th, Tuesday, October 15th, November, uh, Tuesday, November 19th, and Tuesday, December 17th, uh, from 7 to 9 p.m. Uh, our town clerk has already let us know that these dates are available, available, so I'd like to make a motion to approve these set dates. Second. Councilman Munger? Yes. Councilman Karakini? Yes. Supervisor Keating? Yes. Councilwoman Lukachik? Yes. Councilwoman Martin? Yes. Motion carried. Item number 13 under new business tonight is application for town meeting facility uh, for our town clerk, Sandra Quinlan. Uh, I'll take this use facility. Our town clerk uh, has requested the use of uh, town meeting facility. Uh, the date request is June 20th from 1230 to 3 p.m. Uh, for this, this is for the real ID outreach uh, for the clerk on the go. Uh, for using the town hall community room without the kitchen, and uh, I will make a motion to approve the meeting town facility. Second. Councilman Munger? Yes. Councilman Karakini? Yes. Supervisor Keating? Yes. Councilwoman Lukachik? Yes. Councilwoman Martin? Yes. Motion carried, and thank you, town board. But if it gets dirty, you clean it up. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Item number 14, we have application for use of town meeting facility for a Girl Scout Troop 34710, Councilwoman Lukachek. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Karen Lewandowski and Marge Zawada, the troop co-leader, are securing the town hall community room. Uh, they've got a whole page of scheduled Tuesdays, which are all uh, open for use, and I make a motion to approve the Girl Scout Troop 34710 
for the use of the kit for the use of the town community room without the kitchen from 5:30 to 7:45 on the listed of dates um, those Tuesdays that were provided. I'll, I will second. Councilman Munger? Yes. Councilman Carrikini? Yes. Supervisor Keating? Yes. Councilwoman Lukachuk? Yes. Councilwoman Martin? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, item number 15 is application for use of town meeting facility uh, for, for, my, for myself, Supervisor Keating. Councilman Munger? Yes, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, I have in my hands an application for use of town meeting facility presented by Jason Keating, the town supervisor. Uh, for the date of June 26, 2019, at 7 p.m., uh, for an event, uh, the state of the town. Uh, this is a date change from right. what uh, was previously approved. He is requesting the town hall community room. Supervisor Keating, would you like to speak on this event uh, before we choose to approve it or not? Sure. Uh, essentially, just uh, real, real briefly on, on this meeting, uh, the state of the town uh, is something many municipalities are starting to do. Uh, I originally scheduled it for an earlier date, but uh, we needed some additional information. Uh, after the last budget hearing, a, a lot of you had seen uh, yeah, uh, the, essentially the PowerPoint presentation, where we are going, what we can forecast, budget modeling, etc. Uh, since that meeting uh, that uh, was attended, uh, we've had you know, two, we've had quite a few additional changes in town. Obviously, we have a solid waste contract that's uh, you know, coming in with some changes. Uh, we have uh, reports from here to the County Water Authority, going back to what Legislator Mills was speaking to, we've talked about our infrastructure. Uh, we have water towers, we have lot, uh, water lines, bells, et cetera, that need uh, repaired. So essentially a lot of these upcoming expenses, you know, not just uh, you know, for this year, but also again, looking out to the horizon, being proactive, we're trying not to be reactive, uh, it will be addressed at that meeting. Uh, it will also be a, uh, essentially a mid-year recap on the budget status of where we're at and then kind of where we're going into the 2020 budget. Uh, is there a preliminary uh, budgetary uh, matters? That being said, I would like to make a motion to accept this uh, use of town meeting facility. Second. Councilman Munger? Yes. Councilman Karnakini? Yes. Supervisor Keeney? Yes. Councilman Lukachuk? Yes. Councilman Martin? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, we have no old business this evening, and so we'll move on to reports and presentations. Uh, town Clerk? Thank you, Supervisor Keating. I wanted to thank the Parks Department, um, Scott, Amanda, and Barry for the tremendous job that they do to keep our parks well cared for, clean, and beautifully landscaped. Um, their hard work was evident on Memorial Day when so many residents were here in attendance. So I just wanted to uh, thank them. Um, as um, Legislator Mills had said, um, register for your household hazardous waste collection um, for June 15th at ECC. Also on June 15th is the Trooper Brinkerhoff 5K and 10K race um, right here at the um, right here in town at the Boston Town Park. Pre-registration is Friday, June 14th from 5 to 8 or the morning of the race at um, 8 a.m. The Lions Club Chicken Barbecue is Father's Day, June 16th from noon to 4. Tickets are available at Three Girls Cafe or uh, pay and pick up at the Lion Shelter. As you heard tonight, the Flag Day service um, had a change from actually um, Flag Day of June 14th to Monday, June 17th um, at 7 p.m. Thank you, uh, Tom Board, for approving my um, use of the um, meeting facility um, for the Clerk on the Go outreach. Um, I've partnered with Erie County Clerk Mickey Kearns for the Clerk on the Go seminar and outreach for Thursday, June 20th at 1230 p.m. to 3 p.m. Um, assistance will be available for real ID and enhanced driver's license applications, enrolled veterans in the Thank a Vet discount program, Purple Heart recipient applications for recognition in the William J. Donovan Book of Merit, and staff will be available to answer all of your county clerk service questions. Uh, July 4th, um, fireworks and the Boston Town Band will um, be here on July 4th starting at 8 p.m. And Units Blood Drive will be in the community room on Tuesday, July 9th from 3 to 7 p.m. If you are able, come out and give to this gift of life. And that is all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Walker. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, on my way in this evening, I was handed 
an award that was presented to our own Boston Historical Society, uh, which is a, a great honor for uh, everybody that's working over there. They do a tremendously difficult, or uh, work hard, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Uh, and if you haven't recently been out there, you should go visit. Uh, but I'm going to read this award. It is uh, the Museum Association of New York Award of Merit for 2019, Engaging Communities Award for Living History Day, awarded to the Boston Historical Society. So, Kathy, big thank you for everything you do over there. How about a round of applause? For that? <laughs> and, Mr. Supervisor, that's all I have this evening. All right, thank you very much. Councilman Bernicke. Thank you, Supervisor Keating. Uh, I just wanted to uh, thank the committee for uh, asking me to be a part of the Memorial Day parade. It was a great honor to uh, participate. And uh, if for anybody that wasn't there, the the Boston Town Band did just an amazing job of you know conducting the music that day. And you know, I looked over across the uh, the pavilion. I saw my kids, my wife, uh, seated with the Girl Scout troop. Uh, my wife's the troop leader, and I thought, this is this is small town USA. This is this is a community that you know was honoring uh, all the servicemen that were lost in in combat um, and training. And you know, here we are. We have this grand band that was underneath the pavilion. They just did a wonderful job, and I want to take a moment to thank them. Uh, I'd also like to thank the attorney, um, and Zach and Jason, for all the hard work. I'd also like to thank uh, Waste Management for being available to us tonight during our agenda review. Uh, I know how hard you guys worked on this contract, and uh, I just wanted to take a moment to acknowledge that and thank you guys personally. Um, essentially what they did, they, they did all the legwork and then the other board members, we, you know, we were given the contract to review, um, you know, some time ago, and then we convened tonight after the bids were received, and we debated the options. Um, but this is functional government, so I just wanted to say a thank you for that, and that's all I have tonight. Well, thank you very much, Councilwoman Luca Jack. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. The planning board meeting for June 11th is canceled. Um, the code committee, because that is canceled, will be meeting following this town board meeting. And I've been diligently looking through the applicants um, who are interested in the dog control officer's position. Um, I'm hoping that we should be rounding off to an end to that um, soon. So uh, as soon as I find out what the um, board's decision is, we'll be moving forward and I will communicate to the applicants that if the position is still open or closed. Um, that's all I have. Okay, thank you very much. Council, one more. Um, tomorrow evening is the ZBA meeting. Um, starts at 7 o'clock with the work session. There are a couple things on the docket, so if anybody's interested in what's being approved in town for zoning board, come on out. Um, I'd like to thank our town clerk, Sandy Quinlan, for doing such an excellent job with the Memorial Day service. A lot. It was a hard effort, a lot of work to do. Um, I had the pleasure of marching the parade with the supervisor and um, Zach and Mike helping out with the honor guard, and uh, always brings a tear to my eye to um, honor our veterans. I got choked up during the service, and they're having our local guys stand up in the the audience, and it's just it's an amazing thing to uh, participate with that. I always I have a soft spot in my heart for veterans, so um, it was an honor. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so I, I move on to my report. Uh, for the summer schedule, just as a quick reminder to everyone, tonight actually kicks off the, uh, the town board summer schedule. So we actually, this is where we move to one board meeting per month for June, July, and August. So of course tonight being June 5th is our first summer schedule meeting. Um, July 10th will be our next town board meeting. August 7th will be the following meeting. And then in September we'll reserve, re resume back to the first and third Wednesday of the month. Uh, there may be, uh, in uh, at the, Towards the end of June and also towards the end of July, there may be a, uh, a special meeting. So if anybody sees the pub, you know, it's, it's a state law, we have to put, make a post, uh, post out with this information out uh, to uh, social media, the town website, 
uh, news, et cetera, but we, we traditionally will hold a special meeting to pay essentially bills. Uh, I try to keep it only to bills so the public, if they don't want to come in and listen to it, you saw how quickly we paid the bills tonight. If you don't want to be here, you don't have to be here. But and again, just to make sure that there's no late payments, we do try to do our due diligence and have a, I call a special meeting and we, we show up for that. Um, if there's any additional content, of course, that will be published out to the town website. Uh, let's see. Uh, the state of the town, again, just kind of a quick recap on that. Um, I, I'm really kind of, truth, I'm, I'm really hoping for a, a decent turnout here. Again, a lot of municipalities have done this before in the past. Uh, it's not something that is relatively common in the town of Boston. Has, I, I don't recall it having been done before. Uh, but again, I, I, again, openness and transparency is what this board has always tried to strive for and to reach out to the public and it can uh, be transparent and let you know and keep you informed as to where we're going and also while still continuing to seek feedback. Uh, so again, once again, that state of the town will be June 26 at 7 p.m. downstairs in the community room, uh, and uh, you know, hopefully it's well, again it's well attended. I, I will certainly echo the additional sentiments for the Memorial Day celebration. It was very well done. Our town clerk put a lot of effort in, into that event, as did the town band. Uh, uh, you know, we, we certainly heard that one of our po our local posts is sadly closing, and they're trying they're doing a transfer over to the Hamburg. Uh, post right now, which is it's important. It's really sad and unfortunate. Uh, just there's not a lot of involvement with the younger generations. You know, it, there's no easy way to say that. My brother is currently actively serving, and I'll be the first to admit, uh, even having small conversations with him over the years, uh, he does even he doesn't anticipate going, which is sad to hear uh, from my own brother. So um, it, it's sad, but I did uh, express to the veterans that they are still Boston residents. They are still Boston, and that any time they want to be involved, they're certainly welcome. To any town event, uh, and uh, they, they were certainly very, very open and honored to hear that. Um, the real ID, you know, I'll, I'll touch base on another thing that came to mind when I was listening to some of this. Actually, Councilwoman Lukacek and I, and uh, uh, we, we have some other people that are doing some a little bit of outreach. But I did discuss this at the Memorial Day event. So if you did not attend it, you probably didn't hear. But the town board is working on the hometown heroes banners. You've, you've probably seen them over in Hamburg. But uh, that, that is something we want to try to bring here to the town of Boston. There's there's a lot of people who have served in our community. Again, I, I've had active duty uh, serving family members. Uh, they're not here. They're back in Syracuse. But again, for the for the Boston residents, you know, it's something we certainly want to do to acknowledge them. And of course, more information uh, will come out on that once we have that program put together, which we've been collaborating with, uh, with the Hamburg uh, contact over there. Uh, dog control officer position, I did touch base with the board in executive session uh, tonight very briefly on some of the interviews that I've conducted so far. Hopefully we can find a candidate, but just uh, as a kind of a, a public service announcement, I will say currently at this time, our current dog control officer took another position. Uh, so unfortunately, uh, the town of Boston does not have a dog control officer. Uh, I wish uh, you know we, we could have identified somebody a little bit quicker, uh, but to, again, I'd much rather take the time and hire the right person than just to put somebody into a position that we're back to square one, you know, just a short time later. Uh, so we, we will certainly keep everybody up to date on that. Um, I have reached out to surrounding community uh, leaders, uh, supervisors for that matter, um, and trying to work out some kind of a, a mutual agreement, uh, whether it's cold in Hamburg or even Orchard Park, to see if they'll help us out. You know, in the interim to. Get, get us, you know, get us over this, uh, this little bit of a gap that we have. Uh, real ID, uh, I, 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 I kind of paused and you know, I didn't want to steal the town clerk's thunder on this, uh, but as of next year, 2020, real ID is something that's going to be real. If you want to jump on an airplane and just to travel to see your family in Florida or just to get out of this cold weather, it doesn't seem to leave us here in western New York, uh, you will need